I'd like to spend a few moments discussing the all-important picture sharpness, so important in a high-definition lens. If our lens and camera images a chart that is this simple, and I frame this chart, so it's looking at a white, and let's assume this is a perfect black. This white light emanating from this into the lens goes in at, say, 100% light. There's an efficiency, a transmitting efficiency in that lens coming out of the lens that will be less than 100% light. A good lens would be somewhere above 80%. Now, imaging the black, we'd like that black to come out at zero out of the lens, but no lens can do that very precisely. There's reflections, veiling glares, etc., that will raise that black level so slightly. The whole trick of a good optical design is to minimize that interference with the black, get those flares and veiling glare very low so we get an excellent black coming out, an 80 plus percent white, and it is the ratio of that 80 percent to whatever the black level is that is the formal contrast ratio of the lens. Now when the lens and camera image a chart with black and white details that are increasing in spatial frequency, the contrast will start to drop as you elevate the spatial frequencies. That's the roll-off in resolution. And when we look at what we call multiburst charts, which is the chart I have over here. So what this chart is showing us is that black and white low frequency reproduction that defines the contrast ratio of the lens. And then the roll-off of that contrast as those bars get finer and finer in spatial frequency that we call the MTF, the modulation of that contrast. And that is a direct measurement of the sharpness of your lens. So to get high sharpness, you must start with the highest contrast ratio that you can in the lens design. And then try and hold that up with good optical design across the passband of those spatial frequencies. And in this next chart, I'm showing two lenses, one that has a good contrast ratio and then a roll off of that contrast with spatial frequencies. But then above it is a new lens that has a higher contrast ratio. And you can see that its contrast roll off is not falling off so fast. That's the lens that is sharper. And that is what we have achieved in this new lens. We went all out to get a very, very high contrast ratio and then new optical design to sustain that contrast as best we can across the high definition passband. Now I've talked about this change of black and white detail, its contrast with spatial frequency. Let me put that in perspective for a high definition lens. For a lens that's going to be imaging to create 1080 line high definition, we must be able to squeak through that lens 100 pairs of black and white within a millimeter. We call this the 100 line pairs per millimeter. And this chart is intended to give you a visual recognition of what that means. A millimeter is very, very small. And I have to pump through a hundred line pairs through each millimeter of that lens with a highest contrast as possible. And that is what we strove for in the design of this lens. And what we achieved is when that passes through the lens, coming out the output port of the lens into the camera, that's an extraordinary performance in a two-third inch lens. So when we talk about the overall optical performance of the lens, I place great emphasis on sharpness. We are interested in the sharpness at the picture center, and then how we control that as we go towards the picture extremities. I talked about the importance of contrast ratio. And in this lens, we use the most contemporary in new optical coatings on each and every one of the more than two dozen glass elements in that lens. Those optical coatings are to increase the transmissivity of the white 
while also reducing reflections and veiling glares to get the black down as far as possible so that we get that high contrast ratio. Now at the same time, we made improvements in what we call the light distribution. All lenses, the light is a maximum going through the center of the lens and there's a, a fall off optical physics as you go to the extremities. There are things you can do to counter that to a degree and we did manage to make big improvements there. We made improvements in the focus breathing of the lens by new optical design in the front elements. We improved with a very wide angle lens like this, you fight geometric distortions, major optical challenge. And we were able to overcome those and beat them down to a very low level in this lens. So when you go the maximum wide angle of 96 degrees, the geometric distortion is imperceptible. To achieve the performance in this lens, we had the benefit of a decade later, much more powerful computers, new software design tools that have evolved over the last 10 years. Today they are very powerful indeed. We have new glass materials at our disposal, many of them. I mentioned the new optical coatings. These are exotic materials that are deposited on the lens elements. We have new materials. Then we have new manufacturing processes, new test and alignment processes. And collectively, all of these allow us to produce a lens 10 years later that is significantly better than its predecessor. Today, our optical designers have literally hundreds of glass materials to choose from. The major glass manufacturers around the world will produce charts like the one shown here. Very strange to people like you and I, but to an optical designer, this is a tremendous amount of information. Each little square on that chart is a material with specific characteristics. The optical designers can interpret that, and there are other charts. And they search for new glasses. There's always new glass materials appearing with perhaps a higher dispersion or a higher index of refractivity. And they will couple different glass elements together to combat aberrations, to elevate uh, transmissivity and MTF and it is in this lens with more than two dozen elements there are almost 20 different glass materials. <laughs>